And welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal here with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. And this is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets, all about keeping you informed as far as sector rotation, what's moving these markets, what you can anticipate going forward, all about keeping you prepared for these markets. Choppiness remains. We did get a pullback last week. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to share with you some of those headline news that drove price action last week. And of course, a lot of the focus was on Fed Chair Powell's talk in front of the House. And he did in that period, his comments, he talked about the fact that the inflation rate is still quite sticky. It's still high. So we are on the lookout for at least two more interest rate hikes going into the end of the year. And of course, that elevated some nervousness. Also, we did hear from overseas, the Bank of England and also Norway raised their interest rates by a half of a percent. The concern there is that particularly in England, it was because they had a high inflation print where they were steadying and that, again, brought concerns that the U.S. could easily experience a very similar type of reaction. Now, we did get movement in the markets in response to that. I'll share that with you as we move forward. We did see weekly jobless claims increase a bit. But even more important was the fact that we did get news that U.S. business activity remains robust. This was a flash report, PMI two reports from the S&P, and they did show that the economy is still on good standing. So at the end of the day, we did get what I would call mixed signals. There were certainly interest rate related concerns and movements in the broader markets. We'll see if that remains. But I would say that more importantly, we did have elevated markets in the sense of technology, a number of areas that were overbought, a lot in the way of frothiness that was reduced a bit last week. I'll share that with you. Next week, pretty quiet. We do get durable goods orders. We're going to get, actually, it's not that quiet. Later in the week, we will get that consumer price index core data. This is very important Federal Reserve, very closely watched report. That's going to come later in the week next week. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the markets and see where did they close for the week. And here we are with the daily price chart of the S&P 500. And we can see the pullback that took place this week. And as mentioned, particularly here with the S&P, I'll share with you a view of the NASDAQ as well. But you can see the RSI got up there above 70 in an overbought position. From there, we have pulled back here. Now, we are dipping below this 10-day simple moving average. And that's not as concerning. The key area that we're going to want to keep an eye on here is this 4,300 level. This was a level that was talked about for months as the market markets continue to try and advance above this long-term area of resistance. So that's what we're going to keep an eye on for any further pullbacks. We ideally want to remain above that 4,300 level. It's a psychological level. And from there in my MEM Edge report, I'll talk more about that next key area of potential support if we continue to see the markets pulling back. Let's take a quick look here at the NASDAQ. This broader market tech-heavy index was down about the same amount as the S&P. And we can see this pullback here coming from an overbought position in that RSI. So as mentioned earlier, the markets were definitely due at least a pause and a pullback. The pullback this week was rather nominal in the face of a potential higher interest rates. So the markets are exhibiting resiliency. We can see this key level here for the NASDAQ is a bit different. 13200 is that number. And we are still nicely well above that. And your momentum indicators are in positive territory. So from here, I do want to take you beneath the broader markets. We want to take a look at those 11 sectors. This is something that I do each week. It's a two-month daily price chart view with that RSI. And then we're looking at these sectors, strength to weakness. Now, it is a very slow evolution so that you can capture, if I may, 
or if we are in the throes of any kind of sector rotation. But what I did want to point out to you is those sectors up here at the forefront, and we can see technology, communication services, and consumer discretionary. And certainly from really any work, the growth areas are these three tech communication services, discretionary. There is one area of healthcare that is going to be growthier, not as defensive as those pharma names. I'll share that with you as we move forward. But in essence, we are seeing these growthier areas up here at the forefront. Discretionary also is cyclical. It does have that nature, but by and large, the growth areas are continuing to lead at the forefront. We can see industrials materials here are up here, and these are also cyclical in nature. They did pull back a little bit more than the markets this week. And this is all about global recession fears with the Bank of England and elsewhere raising their interest rates. So we did see a bit of a pullback in those cyclical areas. As we move forward, we can see REIT stocks, real estate, energy, utilities down here in this lower quartile. I'm going to move on here and share with you a more uh, deep view behind these sectors. And I use ETFs that I find to be very relevant as far as really helping keeping uh, informed as to where the strength is, where the money flows may be ebbing into or out of. And then also I do have those broader market indices up here and we can see the NASDAQ still up here at the forefront, clearly the leadership group for the year, and it does remain in that leadership status. We already saw that pullback rather nominal given the advance that we've seen. And then from here, let's take a look at some of these underlying areas in the NASDAQ that pulled back. First up is software stocks. They did pull back this week 3%, but we do still have positive momentum here. As we move forward, I will share with you a pullback versus failed base breakouts. You will want to know the difference because there will be tremendous opportunities from my work to use these pullbacks as an entry point in some of these better uh certainly more fundamentally sound companies. Let's take a look at semiconductors. This is SOXX. Pulled back a little bit more, 4.5%. We can see that this momentum is still in positive territory, but certainly a well-deserved pullback. There are some names that are holding up and you will want to be aware of those names in these areas that are pulling back, names that have not pulled back as much. Semiconductors were down 4.5%. This is an opportunity for you to unveil leadership names. These are going to be the names that are not as impacted by the pullback. They're holding up better. So from here, let's take a look at some other areas. We did see bank stocks down 8 0.1%. So this downtrend reversal attempt has in fact failed. So any of you that did get into some of these bank stocks in the attempt to capture this downtrend reversal, you will want to take note. Another area that pulled back this week is biotech stocks, IBB. This particular group was down a little over 2%, but it is what I would call a failed downtrend reversal. Pretty big volume today, but it was on buying. So we'll keep an eye on that. That's a very big area in the broader markets as it relates to the number of names within that industry group. So from here, what I do want to do is initially share with you some of the names that did get a bit harder hit hit harder this week, and you will note a theme. Here we are with Symbotic, S-Y-M, a robotic Organ, uh, company that provides robotics for industrial firms. We can see that it did pull back here quite a bit. And another name that had been on the rise, AI, and we can see this particular name also pulled back quite a bit. In essence, sharing with you that a lot of this was due to what I would call frothiness, these big advances and really not much in the way of news except AI, 
and robotics as well. So pull back very orderly, keep an eye, if the momentum, you want that to remain positive and keep an eye on historical precedents relative to what that chart looks like on pullbacks. And most importantly is gonna be that reverse out of that pullback when we enter into an uptrend. So from here, I do wanna share with you some of these breakouts that have failed and then from there, we'll take a look at names that are finding support. And this is going to be all about helping you identify what to be on the lookout on your charts, whether you own these stocks or if, in fact, you are on the lookout for potentially dipping in to these names on their pullbacks. So here we are with Unity Software. U is the ticker symbol. And this stock did have a nice base breakout at the beginning of this week. Super nice high volume. It was looking very attractive. But again, this overbought position and we did get a pullback. So at this point in time, it's in the beginning stages of being what is called a failed breakout, although we are seemingly finding some support. Another name that had a nice breakdown uh, breakout is Teradyne. T-E-R is the ticker. This was a lengthier base breakout again into an overbought position on that RSI. Let's take a look at this MACD signaling at the very least that this uptrend, it may pause. We may find support here at that 21 day. However, if we don't and we get that RSI into negative territory, I'll just uh, take a minute and mark this up because it's all about using historical precedents as your guide. So back here in this April pullback in the broader markets with TER, we did see the stock break below these key areas of support, moving averages, your RSI got into negative territory and it did foretell a further downside. So at this point in time, we are still finding support. We do still have that positive RSI, but you do want to keep an eye on your name and make sure that they are continuing to find support. Here's a semiconductor name that did not fare well this week. It fell further than the markets indicating weakness. This is Marvell, M-R-V-L. But we do still have positive momentum, the kind of thing with any of your names you will want to keep your eye on that momentum shift. Can this stock get back up above that 21-day moving average? and in fact, continue its uptrend. So let's take a look at some names that are actually finding support while others in the area are pulling back more. This is Adobe, very highly regarded in the AI space. And we can see this gap up on news, nice uptrend, but the stock is really holding in remarkably well, given the pullback that we are seeing elsewhere. I'll go ahead and pull up the weekly on Adobe. You can see it was down 2% relative to software stocks that were down over 3%, but most importantly is finding support at that upward trending 10 day simple moving average. Another couple of names that we can take a look at for uh, really just helping you stay on top of some of these names that have had these big run-ups. How do you behave at this point or how do you treat those names? This is AP APPN, smaller software company, and we can see it's pulling back, but finding support at that 21-day simple moving average. Momentum is still positive, so we are still in good standing there. Another name that had a tremendous run, and it did pull back only 1.5%. That's in line with the broader markets, and that is Tesla. And you can see super overbought. I would have anticipated a bit more of a pullback, but take a look, finding support at that upward trending 10-day simple moving average. So generally quite constructive. Now, from here, I was going to go ahead and share with you some downtrend reversals that are not shaping up. They were in the beginning stages. This is another educational area that just to share with you so that you'll know what to be on the lookout for to tell you that that downtrend reversal does have legs. Here we are with Domino's Pizza, DPZ. This is a gap up on a Wall Street upgrade. The stock subsequently did trade above this 200-day simple moving average key area of upside resistance. However, we did not make it 
the stock pulled back. That downtrend reversal did not take shape. One other name that we can take a quick look at here in that semiconductor space, Texas Instruments, not really a winner to begin with, but we did have this uptrend that failed. We've broken through every area of support. So that is the difference relative to these names that are in those growthier areas that are finding support. This is Workday WD. A Y. One last thing I want to share with you news last week, and it's all about the move back into cryptocurrency. And we'll see if that will, in fact, remain or have legs. There was news that BlackRock, Invesco, and Wisdom Tree filed for spot Bitcoin ETFs. And then we also did see a crypto exchange that launched on Tuesday, and it's backed by Schwab and Citadel. So from there, we did see a move into some of these crypto names. You can take a look at this ETF as an example, BLOK. You can see here's the gap up on the news. I was going to share with you on stock charts how you can quickly assess and get to these cryptos if you are interested. Now, on by clicking on this, it will list certainly the more primary. There are a number of cryptocurrencies, but these are the most no well-known Bitcoin. So from here, if you click onto that Bitcoin, you can then go ahead and pull up the chart and you'll see that nice advance that is shaping up here in Bitcoin, Ethereum is another widely watched cryptocurrency, not quite as dynamic, but it is certainly worth noting. And I will talk more about that in my MEM Edge report. So if you haven't already, use that link below. You can try all my twice weekly MEM Edge report, all about keeping you up to date on the dynamics within the markets. We have a number of names that are really excelling this week, despite a weak broader market. And I'd love for you to see that as well. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. I'm going to look for you again here next week.